Proning an RDS patient receiving invasive mechanical ventilation in the ICU must be done carefully to ensure safety during the procedure. For the procedure to be successful, it is vital to use trained and experienced staff. The video you are about to watch shows the technique used to achieve the prone position and the return to the supine position. The procedure usually requires three to four people. One person remains at the head of the bed to secure the endotracheal tube and the ventilator lines. This person coordinates the procedure. The other people position themselves on each side of the bed. The procedure is performed following five steps. The first step is to prepare the procedure. At this stage, you have to decide which direction to turn the patient, to the left or to the right. Priority is given to whichever side the central venous lines are located. Check the length of the vascular lines and the transcutaneous saturation cable to be sure they are long enough. Move the ventilator as close to the patient as possible. Check the patient's hemodynamic status and the level of sedation. Secure the endotracheal tube and the gastric tube. Protect the skin on the forehead, knees, iliac crests, and thorax from pressure sores using adhesive pads. Protect the patient's eyes and get the electrocardiogram electrodes ready for use. The second step is to move the patient horizontally. Then they are moved towards the opposite side. From the side they will subsequently be turned towards laterally by pulling the bed sheet. The patient should be moved towards the side of the central venous line. After moving the patient sideways, the hand on whichever side they will be rotated onto is placed under the buttock. A new bed sheet is also prepared along the length of the bed. The third step is a side lie. The patient is rotated laterally in a full side lying position. The patient is maintained in this position for a short time while one person removes the electrodes from the anterior thorax and another person attaches the new electrodes to the back. The fourth step is complete proning. The new bed sheet is used to pull the patient and to move them into the final complete prone position. The body is placed in a horizontal position at 180 degrees. The abdomen is usually not supported. The upper limbs are placed alongside the body. The fifth step is post-proning installation. The patient is moved to the center of the bed. The head is turned laterally and moved every two hours. The endotracheal tube must be easily accessible. Care should be taken to close the eyelids tightly and avoid ear kinking. To move the patient from the prone to the supine position, the steps are as follows. The first step is to move the patient horizontally towards the center of the bed. The second step is a side lying on the same side as in step 3 of the proning procedure. The patient is maintained in this position for a short time while one person removes the electrodes from the posterior thorax and another person attaches the new electrodes to the torso. A new bed sheet is also prepared along the length of the bed. The third step is a complete supine positioning. The new bed sheet is used to pull the patient and to move them into the final complete supine position. To summarize the key points of the procedure, train and experienced staff, three to four people, good preparation of the procedure, horizontal move, side lying position, complete proning, and post proning installation.